This week I'm going to show you five ways to make your keyed green screen composites actually look good. Keying is only ever the first step of a composite. In fact, any visual effects shot is always a multi-step thing, and the more detail you put in, the better it's going to look. Here's a vlogger we filmed on a green screen. I'm going to cover how to turn this into this, or this, or even this. The important thing here is although I'm dealing with a very simple example, just a vlogger on a green screen in front of a new background, the general techniques apply to any kind of compositing you're doing. This is all about how you bind your layers together. Now a lot of the effects I'm using here require HitFilm 4 Pro or HitFilm Express add-ons. Check out the video description for more information on all that. Okay, I'm going to set up my background. I've got a bunch of images imported, so I'll drag one of those underneath my keyed layer. As you can see, although we have a clean key, it doesn't look like the two layers are part of the same shot. I'm first going to select my background image and convert it into a composite shot using this button on the timeline. In the window that pops up, I'll switch this option from current layer to timeline so that the new composite shot has the same properties as our main one. After clicking OK, you can see that we have a brand new composite shot timeline with the image moved inside. Whatever is on this timeline will now show up as our background, and that's going to save us a bit of time later on. OK, so you're probably all familiar with spill suppression. This is the technique where you reduce the amount of light spilled over from your green screen onto your foreground. What we're also going to cover now is something called spill replacement. So here's what spill suppression does. You start off with your green screen clip. This dog is actually a great example because his pale coat really sucks in all of the green spill off the green screen. It's not super obvious when the green screen is still there, but once you key it out, it's suddenly noticeable that there's a ton of green light over the image, especially under the dog's chin and on its chest. Spill suppression is designed to neutralize that green spill. If we switch to the despill map view, you can see exactly which parts of the image are going to receive the spill suppression. For this fella, I'm going to increase the hue range to 0.32 so that all of that green fur is included in the despill. Okay, so watch it as I adjust the amount of spill suppression. Here it is with no spill suppression at all, and you can see there's a ton of green in the fur. Now, as I increase the spill suppression, note how the green disappears and turns into a neutral, natural colour. HitFilm goes one step further with something called Spill Replacement, which doesn't just neutralise the spill, but actually changes it from the original colour into something else entirely. So by default, HitFilm is neutralising spill to be a mid-grey. But I could drop in my sunset sky background here, and then change the spill replacement colour to one of these deep reds or oranges. And if you've got a background that's fairly uniform in colour, that's really great. But what about something with more variation? I mean, even in this example, do I go for the dark reds, the oranges, or the yellows? Well, that's when you simply select a source layer and let HitFilm figure it out. Light wrap is brilliant. It's a subtle but really important consequence of putting something in front of a bright background. In the sunset example, there's a really bright sun in the background. But without light wrap, there's no interaction between the two layers. This causes the background to look more like a painted backdrop, rather than something that's actually emitting light. I'm going to find the light wrap effect and add it to the foreground layer. In the light wrap settings, I'll change the source layer to the background, and immediately it makes a difference, with the background colours bleeding into the foreground, but without losing that edge definition. I always switch the blend mode to lighten, because it creates a more realistic result. For this particular shot, I'm going to increase the radius to about 60, which is pretty big, but it works in this case, because it's quite an extreme backdrop but I am then going to drop the opacity down to about 0.8, so that the overall effect is a bit subtler. So if I turn the effect off and on, check out the difference it makes. With it on, there's all this light bloom going on around the sun and the bright patches of sky, while nothing really changes in the darker areas. And although the difference is really obvious when I'm switching it on and off like this, once it's on, it very quickly disappears into the image and just looks right. So the thing is, when you're combining multiple layers together, the chances are they're from different sources. So in this example, the vlogger was shot on an FS700, while the backgrounds are just images I found on Google. But even if you shot it all with the same equipment, chances are you were under different conditions, or even shot on completely different days. So that's where grading comes in, to make it all look like it comes from the same place. Let's take a quick look at our layers. 
If I add the levels histogram, we can get a simple readout on what the layer looks like. Our keyed layer has a nice range of colour values and a decent contrast range. Whereas if you compare that to our background, you can see that that's super minimal, with everything in the red channel and just these two big peaks at the bright and dark ends of the spectrum, and not very much in the middle. So back on our foreground layer, I'm going to adjust the contrast so that she also has nice solid blacks. And that's just instantly better with just that one tweak using the levels histogram. An interesting way of matching the looks of multiple layers is to use something called the grading transfer effect. This basically does what it says on the tin, applying the look of one layer to another. Let's give it a whirl. So after adding it to the foreground, I'm going to go in and select the background as the reference layer. Wow, okay, so that's really quite intense. But you can immediately see what's actually going on. And at this point, let's make use of our background composite shot. I'm going to jump over to the background comp and then drag in a different image, maybe this nightclub scene. So switching back to the main composite shot, you can see that the grade transfer has updated based on that new background. Again, this is a super extreme example, but you get the idea of what it's doing. But let's go in and make it a bit less crazy. In the global settings, I'll drop both the brightness and the chrominance shifts down to zero, and then I'll gradually increase them until I get something I like. I'm pretty happy with the overall brightness of the foreground already, so I'm only going to put that up to about 20%. What we really want to do is match those colours, so I now start to boost up the chrominance. So in this case, although my instinct is to whack chrominance shift way up, it actually works pretty nicely around about 20% again. This still looks natural, which is what we want, but it blends those layers together really well. The funny thing is that your eyes have probably already adjusted to it, so it's kind of hard to tell if the effect is even doing anything. But check out what the original looks like with grading transfer turned off. OK, and here it is again with it turned on. So that's quite drastically changing the foreground, and it's perfectly capturing the lighting of the background. If I go back and swap out the background again for a different image, and then go back to the main comp, you can see that it just works. So generally speaking, cinematographers have spent decades trying to avoid visual aberrations like anamorphic streaking and lens flares and dirt on the lens. And then as visual effects artists, we come along and we try and recreate all of those things. And the reason for that is that digital effects in particular are a bit too pristine and a bit too perfect. And if you reintroduce some of those errors, it actually makes the shots look more natural and more realistic. For this, we're going to need a grade layer, which I'll add by going to the new layer menu down on the timeline. Grade layers are handy because they affect everything underneath them. To this, I'm going to add light streaks, which requires a bit of setting up. First up, switch the blend to add so that it mixes in with the other layers. It's then a matter of adjusting the settings to get the look that you want. I'm going to put the threshold way up so that only the very brightest parts of the image are going to generate streaks. And I'll keep the brightness and size relatively low so that it remains a subtle effect. If I switch it on and off, you can see the difference it's actually making. This gets interesting when the foreground layer goes in front of the bright areas of the background. This automatically updates the streaks effect and makes it look like the presenter is interacting with the background lighting. This is all about simulating what you might capture through a lens if you'd shot it for real. The anamorphic lens flare effect can be used for a similar purpose, mixing the layers up so that they appear to be interacting with each other. I'm going to adjust the streak here to be horizontal, and I'm going to turn off pivoting so that the streaks are directly connected to the source that's generating them. Again, I'll keep the threshold pretty high so that only the bright areas are generating the flaring, and I'm going to increase the blur and drop the intensity down. The result is a subtle streaking across both layers. It should be emphasised that this stuff is all optional and subject to taste, and it's not going to work for every project and every story you're trying to tell. There's a ton of effects in HitFilm that are useful for this kind of thing. Lens dirt and light flares can also work wonders. For example, I'm using an auto flare in this sunset shot, so that there's a nice glow coming off the sun, which still gets obscured when her hand goes in front of it. So when you design the final look for your film, you're actually creating a unified look across the entire frame, and that's really useful when it comes to visual effects shots. I tend to put another grade layer above everything in the scene, and use that to do the final grade. This is obviously dependent entirely on the specifics of the shot, but just to demonstrate the concept, I'm going to take a shortcut and just slap on our good friend the cine style effect. Obviously, in a real project, you'd want to take more time to fine-tune the look, 
most probably using a combination of multiple effects. The point though is that the unified adjustments to contrast and colour have already helped to make this shot look more real. The letterbox bars actually contribute as well, introducing a visual framing which encourages viewers to regard it as a single shot. CineStyle even adds grain across the whole frame, which is a subtle way of telling an audience's eye that it was all shot on the same stock or digital format. So by following these five tips, we've gone from our original green screen shot and the initial basic comp to a version which looks far more convincing and natural, albeit in quite a stylized form in this specific example. So a lot of this stuff is really subtle, but if it wasn't there, the audience would instinctively know that something was missing, even if they couldn't tell you what it actually was. And that's kind of the holy grail of visual effects, because after hours and hours of work, if nobody watching even notices that anything's been done, well, that's when you know that you've done your job properly. Okay, so thanks for watching. That's all for this week. Josh and Kirsty will be back next week, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any new episodes. Hey guys, it's Kirsty here. I just wanted to jump into Simon's episode to let you know that we've got a sale going on 15% off Hitphone 4 Pro until the 1st of February 2016. So if you want to get your hands on the software, now's the time.